The following table contains the ACT scores and the GPA for 8 college students. So that means the sample size is equal to 8. GPA is based on a 4 point scale and has been rounded to 1 digit after the decimal. So this is the data on 8 students that we are given. This is GPA and this is ACT. We have to estimate the relationship between GPA and ACT using OLS. That is, we have to obtain the intercept and slope estimates in this equation. So first of all, note that this equation is of this format. So if you recall, this is the equation of the line of best fit. Y hat is equal to beta 0 hat plus beta 1 hat xi. Okay, so that means GPA is playing the role of your y variable and ACT is playing the role of your x variable. So over here, GPA is your dependent variable. So that's playing the role of your y variable. And ACT is your independent variable. So that's playing the role of your x variable. Okay, now let's find beta 0 hat and beta 1 hat. Basically, in this particular question, they are testing you a lot on the formulas, right? So let me write the formulas over here. We know that the formula for beta 0 hat is equal to y bar minus beta 1 hat x bar. And the formula for beta 1 hat is equal to summation of yi minus y bar multiplied by xi minus x bar divided by summation of xi minus x bar whole square. Okay, note that in the numerator over here, we have a multiplication of y minus y bar with xi minus x bar. So it doesn't matter whether you write y minus y bar first or whether you write xi minus x bar first. Basically, the same thing can also be written as summation of xi minus x bar multiplied by yi minus y bar divided by summation of xi minus x bar whole square. Okay, so in this particular question, the role of y variable is played by GPA and the role of x variable is played by ACT. That means I can also write this formula as GPA bar. That means the mean of GPA minus beta 1 hat ACT bar. That means the mean of ACT. Similarly, this formula can be written as summation ACTI minus ACT bar multiplied by GPA I minus GPA bar divided by summation ACT I minus ACT bar whole square. So these are the formulas that we have. Now I'm going to show you how to use these formulas to get the values of beta 0 hat and beta 1 hat. I've already done all the calculations using Microsoft Excel. So let me show you how to go about these calculations. Well, as you can see, to find beta 0 hat, we first need to know what beta 1 hat is equal to. So the first thing that we are going to find is the value of beta 1 hat. Okay, so let's start with the numerator. If you see in the numerator of beta 1 hat, you first need to find the mean of ACT. So this ACT bar is actually mean of ACT. And we also need to find the mean of GPA. Right, So this is the first thing that we are going to find, the mean of ACT and the mean of GPA. So this is the data on GPA. And as you can see over here, this is the mean of GPA. I hope you know how to find mean given a set of data. So all you have to do is sum all of these values of GPA and divide by 8 and you will get this mean value of GPA. Okay, so the mean of GPA is coming out to be 3.2125. Now, similarly, I have found over here the mean of ACT. So you have to sum all these values over here and divide by 8. And the mean of ACT will come out to be 25.875. Okay, so after finding the mean of ACT and the mean of GPA, we have to find GPA minus the mean of GPA. So that's something that I've done over here. So this thing, GPA minus the mean of GPA is over here in this column. Okay, so how have I found this? Well, you have to take the value of GPA, which is 2.8, minus the mean of GPA. So it is 3.2125. So this number that you see over here, this is 2.8, that is the first value of GPA, minus the mean of GPA. So minus 3.2125. Okay. Similarly, this number over here is the value of GPA, that is 3.4, minus the mean of GPA, that is 3.2125. Okay, so I hope this is clear. This column is based on GPA minus the mean of GPA. So from every value of GPA, 
you have to subtract the mean of GPA. Similarly, you have to find ACT minus mean of ACT. So this part over here. So I have found it over here. If you see over here, this is ACT minus mean of ACT. And how do we find this? Well, it's the same concept. So if you take a look at the first value of ACT, that is 21. So this over here is 21 minus the mean of ACT, which is 25.875. Okay. Similarly, if you talk about the second value over here, this is the second value of ACT, which is 24 minus the mean of ACT, which is 25.875. Okay. So I hope this is clear. So this column has GPA minus mean of GPA and this column over here has ACT minus the mean of ACT. If you take a look at the numerator, the numerator involves the multiplication of these two columns. Okay. So over here, there is a bracket, right? So first you have to multiply these two columns and then there is a summation. So I'm going to multiply this column in which I have GPA minus the mean of GPA. So this column, this is your column number four. Okay. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to multiply your column number four with your column number six, right? So I hope this is clear. So now we are going to do a multiplication of column number four. So this is your column number four with column number six. This is your column number six. Okay. So this over here, that is the last column that you see over here. This is the multiplication of column number four with column number six. Okay. And this multiplication is needed for the numerator of your beta one hat, right? So this number over here, which is 2.011, it is the multiplication of the first number over here. So minus 0 0.413 and the first number over here, which is minus 4.875. Okay. So when you multiply this number with this number, you're going to get 2.011, right? So this is how we have got this entire column by multiplying the column number four by column number six. And over here, this is the sum. Okay. So the sum of this column is 5.8125 and this is what the numerator of beta 1 hat is equal to. So if you take a look at the formula, the numerator of beta 1 hat is that you have to multiply ACT minus the mean of ACT with GPA minus the mean of GPA. And once you are done with that, you have to take the sum. So there is a summation over here, right? So that means the numerator is coming out to be 5.8125. I hope this much is clear. Now we are going to find the denominator. If you've seen the denominator, you have ACT minus the mean of ACT whole square, and then you have to sum it. Okay. So for this, you have to take a look at the column number seven. So this is the column number seven over here. In the column number seven, as you can see, I have ACT minus mean of ACT whole squared. So this is just the square of column number six. Okay. So the column number seven is nothing, just the square of column number six. So this 23.766 that you see over here is the square of minus 4.875. Similarly, this 3.516 that you see over here is the square of minus 1.875. This 0 0.016 that you see over here, it's the square of 0 0.125, right? And now we have to sum this. So if we sum this, we get 56.875 and this is your denominator in the formula of beta 1 hat. So in the denominator, you need to take the summation of ACT minus the mean of ACT whole square. So that means the denominator is 56.875. Okay. And when you divide this, you're going to get that your slope estimate is equal to 0 0.1022. So I've already done the calculation over here. So this is your beta one hat, right? I hope this much is clear. Now we are going to find beta zero hat. Finding beta zero hat is very simple. You just need to utilize three pieces of information. You need to know what the mean of GPA is. Well, we already know it, that the mean of GPA is 3.2125. So we already know what the mean of GPA is. Similarly, we already know what beta one hat is. We have just found it. And we also know what is your mean of ACT, that is 25.875. So if you put these three pieces of information in the formula, it will be written as 3.2125 which is the mean of GPA minus 0.1022. That is your value of beta one hat multiplied by mean of ACT. And that is 25.875. Okay. And when you solve this, you're going to get 0.5681. So this is going to be your beta zero hat. 
I hope this much is clear. So all we have done over here is the math to figure out the value of beta 0 hat and beta 1 hat. And these are the final values that we have got. So this is what we have got over here. That GPA hat is equal to 0 0.5681. That's your value of beta 0 hat. Plus 0 0.1022. That's your value of beta 1 hat. ACT. Okay. Now they are asking us to comment on the direction of the relationship. Well, to figure out the direction of the relationship, you have to take a look at the sign of the slope. So the slope is beta 1 hat and we can see that it is a positive number. That means the line is going to be upward sloping. Okay, so you can say that the direction of the relationship is positive. It's a positive linear relationship. Or you can also say that the direction of the relationship is going to be an upward sloping line because the slope over here is a positive number, right? Now, the next thing is, does the intercept have a useful interpretation here? Let's see. So what is it that the intercept term is going to tell us? Well, the meaning of the intercept term is the expected value of GPA, the expected value of GPA, that is your y variable, when ACT is equal to 0. Okay, so this is the interpretation of the intercept term. So the expected value of GPA when ACT is equal to 0 is 0 0.5681. Clearly, this interpretation is not making much sense over here. Also, if you take a look at the data, you will see that the value of ACT is ranging from 21 to 30. So that means your entire analysis is based on this range of the values of ACT. And when you're interpreting the intercept, you're talking about ACT is equal to zero. So that is actually going to be a case of extrapolation. For the students who don't understand what extrapolation means, let me give you a very quick example over here. So basically, think of it in this way that let's say this is your x variable and this is your y variable. And when you collect the data, you are collecting the data in this range. So let's say hypothetically, this is how your scatter plot looks like. And now when you're going to fit the line, let's say the line looks like this. Now you will see over here that you are only analyzing people who have x values in this range, right? From here to here. Okay, so you're analyzing people with x values in this range. And your intercept is going to tell you something about the value of y when your x is equal to 0. Now, this is what you call extrapolation because if you're analyzing people in this range over here, okay, let's say this is 1000 and this is, let's say, 5000. So if you're analyzing people who have their x values between 1000 and 5000, then it will not be a very good idea to say something about the y value when your x is 0 on the basis of this line, okay, because you're not analyzing people in this range, right? You're not analyzing people close to zero. So you're not analyzing people who have x values close to zero. You're analyzing people in this range, okay? So this is what you call extrapolation. So when you analyze people who have x values in the range of 1000 to 5000, and if you try to say something about a person who has an x value of zero, that means you are extrapolating it, right? You're, you're extending your line from here to here. And you know, this also goes in the other direction. So for example, over here, if there is a person, so let me extend this. If there is a person who has an x value of 10,000. So let's say there is a person over here and he has an x value of 10,000. Well, on the basis of this line, you should not say anything about this person because you're not analyzing people in this range. Okay. You're only analyzing people who have their x values in the range of 1,000 to 5,000. So on the basis of this line, if you try to say something about a person who has x value of zero, or a person who has x value of 10,000, that will be called extrapolation because you are saying something about the people who have x values outside the range that you are analyzing. Okay, so I hope this is clear and that's exactly what's happening in our case as well. So if you see over here, we are only analyzing students who have ACT scores ranging between 21 and 30. But when you are interpreting the intercept, you are interpreting it at ACT is equal to zero. So you are extrapolating it and the interpretation is also not sounding sensible, right? So that's your, this part. And now the next part is how much higher is the GPA predicted to be if the ACT score is increased by five points? Well, this is directly related to the interpretation of this model. So to understand this, we have to first understand what is the meaning of this beta one hat over here. Okay, so what's the interpretation of beta 1 hat? Well, the interpretation of beta 1 hat is if ACT score is increased by one point, 
then the GPA is expected to increase the GPA is expected to increase by 0 0.1022 points okay so that's what your beta 1 hat is telling us and because it's a linear relationship if increasing the ACT by one point is increasing the GPA by 0 0.1022 points then this implies that increasing the ACT by five points will increase the GPA by 0 0.1022 multiplied by five points so that means over here I can just make a small change so instead of writing one point over here I can write five points so if ACT score is increased by five points then the GP is expected to increase by 0 0.1022 multiplied by 5 points and this is equal to 0 0.511 okay so if the ACT score is increased by 1 point then the GP is expected to increase by 0 0.1022 and if the ACT score is increased by 5 points then the GPA is expected to increase by 5 times your slope value which is going to be 5 times 0 0.1022 and the answer is going to be 0 0.511 points okay so i hope this is clear and that's all about the first part of this question now let's move to the second part of this question in the second part of this question we have to compute the fitted values that is gpa hat so we have to find the values of gpa hat and residuals for each observation and then we have to verify that the residuals approximately sum to zero okay so i've already shown the calculations over here let me explain you how have I got these numbers. So this is the GPA data that we are given. So this is your Y variable. This is your X variable that is ACT. And we know that GPA hat is equal to beta zero hat plus beta one hat ACT. And we have already found the values of beta zero hat and beta one hat. So we know that GPA hat is equal to 0 0.5681 plus 0 0.1022 ACT okay so I've made a column over here this is for your fitted values of GPA so this is GPA hat now how to find the fitted values of GPA well for the first student so if you take a look over here for the student number one the ACT score is 21 okay so this fitted value of GPA that is 2.71 is something that I have got by putting 21 over here so I'll explain this in detail. So for the first student, so let me write student number one over here. So for the student number one, the ACT score is equal to 21. So to find the fitted value of GPA for the student number one, all you have to do is that GPA hat is equal to 0 0.5681 plus 0 0.1022. So instead of ACT, you have to put the value of ACT for student number one which is equal to 21 and when you solve this you're going to get 2.71 and you can do the same thing for the other students as well so if you want to find the fitted value of GPA for the second student all you have to do is put 24 over here right so instead of ACT over here you have to put 24 that is the ACT value of student number two and then you will be able to get this 3.02 okay so this is how I'm finding GPA hat over here and once you have got GPA hat, then we have to find the residuals. Well, the residuals are denoted by UI hat. So this is the notation that we have for the residuals. And if you recall, the residuals are written as YI minus YI hat. Okay. So basically your residuals are the actual Y values minus the fitted Y values. Make sure you don't do vice versa. Okay. So don't do fitted Y values minus the actual Y values. You have to do the actual y values minus the fitted y values. So in this case, the role of the y variable is played by GPA. So that means the residuals can be written as GPA i minus GBA i hat. Okay. So what is the actual values of GBA? Well, the actual values of GBA are the values that you collected. So you know, so that's a part of your data. So these, these are the actual values of GPA. And these are the fitted values of GPA. Okay. So your residuals are nothing but just the difference of column number two 
and column number four. So you have to do the values in column number two. So this is your column number two minus the values in column number four. So the first value that you see in the residuals over here is 0 0.09. So I've got this 0 0.09 by doing 2.8, that is the GPA value of the first student, minus 2.71, that's the fitted value of GPA for the first student. Similarly, the second value of the residual is 3.4, that's the GPA value of the second student, minus 3.02, that is the fitted value of GPA of the second student, right? So this is how I've got these residuals. And then they are asking us to check the sum of the residuals, which we can see from here is indeed equal to zero. So this sum is the sum of these residuals and it is equal to zero. Okay, so that was your second part of this question. Now let's move to the third part of this question. So in the third part, they are asking us what is the predicted value of GPA when ACT is equal to 20? Well, first of all, note that they can use the word predicted or they could have also written the word fitted over here. Okay, so predicted value, fitted value mean one and the same thing, right? So we have to find the fitted value of GPA when ACT is equal to 20. Well, we already know how to find GPA hat. So we know that GPA hat is equal to 0 0.5681, that's your value of beta 0 hat, plus 0 0.1022, that's your value of beta 1 hat, ACT. And if ACT is equal to 20, all you have to do is put 20 over here. So that means when ACT is equal to 20, your predicted value of GPA, or in other words, your fitted value of GPA is going to be 0 0.5681 plus 0 0.1022 times 20 and when you solve this you will get that this is equal to 2.612 okay so that's your predicted value of gpa when ect is equal to 20. now let's move to the next part so in the fourth part of this question they are asking us how much of the variation in gpa for these eight students is explained by act basically they are asking us to calculate r square because the statement that they have given us over here is nothing but the definition of R square. Okay, so R square is going to tell you that how much variation in GPA is explained by ACT, right? So as you can see, I've already done the calculation of R square over here. So let me explain you what is it that I've done over here. So the formula that we have for R square is one minus SSR divided by SST where your SSR is sum of squared residuals and SST is total sum of squares, okay? Now, let's take a look at their mathematical expressions. So, the mathematical expression that we have for SSR is summation of ui hat squared and the mathematical expression that we have for SST is summation of yi minus y bar whole square. In our case, the role of y is played by GPA, so we can write this as summation of GPA i minus GPA bar whole squared. Okay, now let me first explain you how to get SSR. Well, your SSR is sum of squared residuals. So we already know what the residuals are. We had found these in one of the previous parts. So these are the values that we had got on the residuals. And now all you have to do is square these values. So if you see in this column, I've taken the square of the residuals. So this number over here, is nothing but just the square of this number. This number over here is the square of this number and so on. So I've taken the square of the residuals and then you have to take the sum of the square of the residuals. So the sum of this particular column over here is 0 0.4347 and this is what your SSR is equal to. Okay, so your SSR is the sum of squared residuals. So first you have to find your residuals, which we already had. I squared them and then I summed it, okay? So SSR is 0 0.4347. Now let's see how to find SST, okay? So to find SST, we have to find GPA minus GPA bar whole square and then we have to sum it. Well, if you recall this from the very first part of this question, I had found GPA minus the mean of GPA, okay? In fact, if you want, I can also quickly show it to you. So this is the table that I showed you when we were doing the first part of this question. And you see over here, there is this column, GPA minus mean of GPA. Okay, so this is what we had found 
in the first part of this question. And now what is it that I have done over here? I have just taken the square of it. Okay, so if you just square this column, that is GPA minus the mean of GPA whole square. So this number over here is the square of this number. This number over here is the square of this number and so on. So I have taken the square of it and then you have to sum it. Okay, because your SST is defined as sum of GPAI minus GPA bar whole square. Okay, so first you square the column and then you sum it. And this is what the sum is, right? So this is the sum of this column. So I hope you got this. This is your column, GPA minus mean of GPA whole square. This is your sum, 1.0288. I've done some rounding off over here. And then all you have to do is put these numbers in the formula that we have. So that means your R square is going to be 1 minus, instead of SSR, we are going to put 0 0.4347. And instead of SST, we are going to put 1.0288. And once you do this, you will see that your R square is coming out to be 0 0.5774, right? And that's it for this part.